Well, I'm back and it's been a week. While I've been gone, I decided to uh, not replace the speed control on the Quantum Nova. In fact, instead I've uh, purchased another capacitor. And uh, as you know, I broke, during the crash, one of those capacitors came off. You can see right there. So I'm gonna solder this on, see if I can fix it myself. We'll see what happens. Um, one thing that's odd about these capacitors that I bought is they're a little bit larger than the ones that are on the on the quadcopter. And I looked all over DigiKey for a smaller capacitor than this. Couldn't find it, but I bought this. This has uh, 220 microfarads, farads, excuse me, and it's 16 volts. So it uh, should work fine. Same specs as the original. And uh, I have to cut those leads there and then solder it on. So I'll take you along for the ride. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is cut the capacitor. So as you can see, it goes right there. The, this side, I don't know if that's positive or negative. I'm not 100% sure about that. But that side, that marking goes on the right side of the speed control like this. So anyway, let's get started. So I'm gonna take my cutters, snap that off. I'm gonna check the length. Looks perfect. And let's cut the other one. All right, so we have that. There, it's cut to length. Next step is we're gonna solder that on there and there's already solder on. My guess is the leads are still stuck in there so I'm gonna try to remove those first. So I'm gonna get my helping hands here and uh, hook that to the circuit board carefully. So it doesn't move around as much, and then we'll start soldering. All right, I have this very, very fine point tip on my Weller WES-51 soldering iron. And uh, we're just going to go in there and try to remove that existing capacitor lug that's on there. All right, I think we've got it out of there. Next step is to solder the capacitor on. And the capacitor, uh, there's solder on the board for the capacitor already since the other one was on there. I think I'm just gonna tin the capacitor just a touch, which tinning is basically touch the soldering iron to the lug and then just put a little bit of solder on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. All right, we're gonna solder the capacitor on. Now I just kinda lay this across both leads. And there we go. All right, we have our new capacitor installed. You can see it right there. I have everything fastened back in with the two screws. The fit was perfect, looks really good. So um, on to the next thing. Everything looks tight there on the wiring, that's what I was checking there. Um, and so let's swing over here. This is the other speed control that took a hit. This one's the one that actually came off, if you saw the photo there. Uh, completely broke off the uh, quadcopter. This whole spar came off and it jerked the uh, power plug loose. I don't believe it damaged that at all. Uh, just pulled it out. This is plugs in right there and then you put a dab of hot glue on that. They do from the factory do not have any hot glue on it and the plugs will come out very very easily which would be really bad when you were flying because then one side of your quadcopter would fall and smash into the ground. 
so <laughs> a little quality control if you buy one of these make sure you check everything out carefully um, so we're gonna go ahead and solder the the uh, control signal wires to the speed control um, I don't know if you can see this but the wires are still there attached where it ripped them loose when it crashed uh, so I'm going to first remove those. I'm going to do that with the soldering iron and this really fine tip tweezers. So let's get with it. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut my wires. So let's cut those off clean. Have a nice pair of Klein cutters for very small gauge wire. It goes all the way up to 22 gauge. Uh, 22 gauge would be stranded. Sorry if I don't get this in frame sometimes. I've got it zoomed in quite a ways. So uh, we're gonna clip those off. Then we're gonna go in and we're gonna strip them. Go up to the 22 gauge. Uh, take probably eighth inch off, something like that. Actually, maybe a little too much we'll get them all stripped here and then I'll trim them trim them to length all together so let's do the other one I tell you working on something this small and trying to video it is a little challenging I could do it a lot faster if I wasn't videoing it but then no one would get to to see anything so it's all worth it. All right, then we're going to take those wires and we're going to twist them slightly. Well, those Klein cutters really do a nice job. Buy quality tools. Um, you can get Klein stuff, I think, off Amazon or various places. A lot of hardware stores don't sell them anymore. They prefer to carry imported tools so they can make more of a profit, which I'm against. All right, we're gonna slice a little bit off the end there, and you don't wanna get these wire pieces in your in your uh, circuit board, so be careful of that. I had a straggler there. I'm gonna snip these off with a small pair of side cutters. Okay, so next step, we're gonna go in here get our soldering iron we're gonna to touch each point and we're gonna pull the wire off that's soldered to the connection there so here we go I want to be careful not to touch anything with the let to turn my soldering iron up a little bit this small tip doesn't conduct a lot of heat so you have to run the iron a little bit hotter oh there we go so, I don't know if you can see that, but there's the small piece of wire that I've just removed. So, try to get it to focus. So, I'm going to do that on the other two, and then we'll solder some wires on. One thing you want to make sure is that you keep your soldering tip clean. So, this is a little pot that's got a little brass Brillo pad, for lack of a better word, in it. Just run your soldering tip into that. Where's the tip? There it is. You just run that in there. A couple times and that'll clean that right up. Look at how nice and clean and shiny. All right, now that we have a clean tip, we're going to tin these wires. So the way we do that, these are very, very small wires. Um, we're going to hold the soldering iron on there. What I like to do is just put a small little dab of solder on the on the tip, then come in there. I don't know if you can see that, and that'll conduct heat. And then I'm just going to touch my solder and there it goes it flowed right on so that's how we tend the wires go ahead and do the other two and then we'll solder it on the board solder this wire on it's a little hard to film I've done the other two so all we're gonna do is we have our tend wire we're gonna touch it to the contact and then we're gonna heat them both heat them both hold and let go it's that easy okay have everything done I think 
Last step is to use some glue in the glue gun and apply it to this connector so to ensure that it doesn't come loose. That's the plug that had come come undone when the whole thing broke off. So I think we pretty much have it ready to uh, plug in the battery and try it out. So I'm charging the battery as we speak. As soon as I get that plugged in, be ready to try it out. All right, it's a moment of truth. Let's power up the transmitter. This is the first time I've tried this. I've been soldering on it. I've worked on it. New fuselage. Uh, the props are just on here for effect. Uh, throttle set to zero. I'll go ahead and put the throttle over here with me just in case. Uh, don't recommend doing this normally, but see they're just on there loose. I've just got them on there so you can see it turn up. Let's see what happens. This is the first time I've plugged it in since it wrecked to a power source and uh, anything could happen. So uh, here we go. Well, we have some sort of problem. Let's try it one more time. I may have a problem with the speed control over there that I worked on. Actually, the one I worked on is over here. So maybe not. Yeah, it looks like it's having an issue with that speed control, so I'm gonna have to investigate. Well, I think I figured out what it was. This plug here was hidden down under this wire harness. That's one of the, that's the plug going to the speed control wire. So that's the servo signal or the control signal going to the speed control. So obviously that needs to be plugged in for it to work. And uh, I guess I didn't check it out cl close enough, did I, if I uh, missed that big plug being out. So it was buried up under there. It must have jerked it and pulled it into some wiring. So uh, I'm gonna plug that in, we'll try it again. All right, second try. Here we go. Get our controller, turn it on. Remember, don't normally do this with the props on. I'm just doing this for the video benefit. Um, you don't want it flying off on you. So here we go. Still a problem. All right, let's see if third time's the charm. I uh, had I plugged this connector into, I guess it's M5, and that's probably not correct. I, <laughs> I thought that's where it would go because the wires are sh so short, but uh, I think it actually goes to M1. So let's try that. I have the transmitter powered on. Here we go. Hey, that sounded good. See our lights are flashing. So let's try to arm it. Doesn't appear to want to arm. Well, I figured it out. You may have caught this at home when you were watching the video, but I forgot to plug in the GPS sensor and the flight controller won't uh, allow the blades to be activated or the motors to be activated unless it gets a good from all the subcomponents like the GPS, compass, so forth. So that's the problem. So let's go ahead and try it out. Here we go. Ahead and turn our radio on. All right, now we're going to hold it over down and to the right to enable motors. 
can see it blinking on the red light. And there it goes. I'd call that pretty good. So time to put the top back on it and then hook it up to Mission Planner and see how are all the systems check out. There it is, all put back together. Turned out good. Now it's a CX-20. <laughs> because the body I ordered was from, I think called Bang Goods or something like that. And uh, so it's now a CX-20, which of course is the same thing, a Cheerson CX-20, same as the Quantum Nova. So I've got it all back together. I have my GPS mounted up here in the in the little pod. I even have the GoPro mount assembly put back on. Looks really good. It bolted all back up. And um, I've got everything secured. So hopefully I'll be ready for a successful flight this time. I am going to hook it up to Mission Planner and look at that. And again, try to program the compass and so forth. Um, I'm not going to do a video on that. There's a lot of videos already on YouTube about it. Uh, take quite a bit of my time. Not that you're not worth it, but I have a lot going on, so I would prefer to spend time on something a little more unique when I do the video. So anyway, hopefully I can get a, a video of it flying soon. And uh, could even be this weekend, I'm not sure. So... Again, thanks for watching Project King videos, and we'll talk with you later.